Hello friends, Miss Natalie here. Today I wanted to show you some layer basics in Krita. So I am starting with a new uh, document, a new drawing that is just has the basic layers that we start with. And right now I am looking at my layer docker, which uh, I keep over with the tabs of for brush preset and tool options. <clears throat> so here I find my layer docker. It shows me I have a paint layer and a background layer. And that's what you start out with. It's usually when you start a new uh, drawing, you start with one paint layer and the background layer. And the background layer is usually, hopefully, locked. That means you can't draw on it, which is a good thing because all the layers that you create are going to be transparent. Um, it, it looks like they're white, but if I click on this eye and make the background go away, you see this checkerboard. Now, this isn't a real checkerboard. That's not what it looks like. The checkerboard is just Krita's way of showing you that things are transparent. So every layer, everything's going to be transparent except for what you put on that layer. The only layer that is white is your background layer. And you don't want to draw on it because when you erase it, it turns it transparent. Uh, example, I draw a line here. I go to use the actual eraser on it. Uh, here's an eraser option and freehand so make it big i've just erased all the white as along with my green fortunately we have our handy dandy undo button so we can undo and we're going to lock that background back up okay so if i want to add a layer there are two things i can do i can click on this plus down here and that will add a paint layer automatically to the layer above the one I was just on. So I was on the background, so it added a layer right above the background. If I was on paint layer one, there we go. Paint layer three has now been added over paint layer one. And the layers are named uh, by what kind of layer they are and then what order you've created them in. So. Paint layer one is the one that start we started with, two is the first one, the next one I created, and three is the one I created after that. If I want a different kind of layer, because we are going to be talking about vector layers in the future, I can click on this little carrot, down carrot, right next to the plus, and it gives me different options of layers that I can create, and one of them is a vector layer which is pretty nifty. And it's layer four and it's a vector layer. So it says vector layer four. Um, so in these layers, I can draw lines. Um, and one of, oh, let's see, I'm gonna take that back to a size 10. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that's really nice is you can use multiple layers for sketching. So say I'm doing my one point perspective drawing. Oops, I forgot I'm still on the eraser mode. I got to turn eraser mode off. Then I can put my line down. So I could make one layer for my horizon line. I could make another layer for my vanishing point. And I could use a third layer for the lines that are going away from my vanishing point or to my vanishing point, depending on your perspective. Ha ha ha. <clears throat> and you, I can have them all on different layers. That way I can change each individual one without having to do anything with the other ones. So for example, if I don't like these orange lines here, I can click on the eraser mode, make my tool big, choose the freehand brush and I can just erase. And since these other lines are on a different layer, they do not erase. Only what's in that one layer will erase. And that's pretty nifty. Other nifty things you can do with layers. Let's look at this drawing. Every single part of this drawing is in its own layer. Um, I've got my horizon line and my sketch line and my lines for windows and doors here. 
And when I clicked on these little eyes, they go away. And you can see the horizon line is no longer visible in my drawing. Now the sketch layer is gone. Now those window and door guidelines are gone. And I can bring them back by clicking on the eye. But let's, we don't really want to see them. Um, I can have uh, different kinds of layers here. I have vector layers and paint layers. And um, I can, what nice thing is, I can have my sketch layer and then I can do another layer on top of it, um, like this final layer. So I had my guidelines in the sketch layer and then I went back with a different color in my final layer on top of it and then I can disappear my sketch layer and all I see is my final layer which is pretty nifty. Um, as you can see, these are not just all called layers one, two, three, four. Um, some of them are, but I've renamed them so I knew what they were. And you can rename a layer by double clicking on it and calling it whatever happens to be in that layer. This is my layer for my clouds. Um, another thing is you can see when I hover over the layer, uh, option it shows me what's in there if i don't want to hover all the time i can also click on this little menu right here and it lets me make the thumbnails bigger so i can kind of see what's inside but i i find keeping them small lets me see more layers at a time without scrolling down and hovering gives you a good idea of what's in there the final thing I wanted to show you is about moving your layers. The cool thing about these layers is they are not set in stone where they are unless you lock them. If you lock a layer, you can't do anything with it. Oops, I did not mean to do that. There we go, except for make a copy. Um, but if a layer is unlocked, you can do all sorts of things with it, including moving it. So right now I have this paint layer three that has all of the color and it is beneath my final layer. <laughs> so these layers kind of stack up almost like you have transparent pieces of glass that you've drawn on that are all stacked up on each other. So the one at the top um, is, well, at the top of everything else. Let me give you a better visual example. So I have this paint layer and the final layer is on top of it. That means that these, these uh, black lines are on top of these fuzzy colors. And so it makes it look like there's a reflection of the sky on the buildings. But maybe I want the fuzzy colors to be on top of the line so it looks more like a mist than a reflection. I can click on this paint layer three and drag it above the final layer. And now these two have switched spots. And so my mist brush was very translucent. So you can see through it, but it it's on top. You can see now that it is on top of that uh, final layer. And if I move my final layer back up, my lines are dark and crisp again because they're on top of this paint layer. So uh, that's everything that I think you're going to need uh, for now about layers. We'll talk more about vector layers in the future and opacity of layers also. But for now, um, try some layers, make some lines, and make some art.